Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, My Study. And in this video, we are going to create our first ever bin stock application. Okay, so without much further ado, let me just quickly go to my cloud console, and we'll just simply visit to Elastic Bin Stock. You can just simply search for Bin Stock from here, Elastic Bin Stock. So this particular service is easy to use service for deploying and scaling your web application when your runtime will be java .NET, php node.js python or there are a lot of the being uh, supported now here comes under two kinds of concept uh, one is like an application and another one is a environment so applications are nothing but a logical groupings of all your environment an environment contains all the details what do you want to deploy where you want to deploy what are the infrastructure you have used what are the versioning you have used inside so everything so first ever thing we are going to create application and based on whatever details it will ask for creation of application you will get to know about that while creation of application you do not need to provide anything apart from application name so let's say this is like uh, my first app okay in case you want to give some description you can provide it uh, you can provide some tags also up to a 50 let me create the app now that you will be able to see we are inside the application and immediately the application being created but no infrastructure being provisioned no uh, application being actually deployed anything it is just the container for your environment now when we create the environment you will get to know that what are the things are required and that is how you are going to deploy your application you can create multiple environment in a single application also you can have a zero environment in your application but that just simply doesn't make sense it is just the uh, black box container we have created where we are not going to keep anything okay so the important stuff will start when you start creating your environment now moment i start creating environment uh, from here I am already inside my application and you will be able to see we don't have any environment for now so let me create a new environment and there are two uh, ways you can go ahead uh, whether you want to uh, provision this environment for running your web site web application or some kind of web api which is uh, serving http request or you want to run for some long running workload on demand okay so in this particular case we'll just go ahead with a web server environment because we want to deploy a very simple sample python based application okay uh, under uh, which application you want to deploy it so by default it's being selected like a my first app uh, application specific some tag here also you can add it okay environment information so this is the environment so let's say i'll just provide uh, one more thing like my first app environment one maybe in future we'll create multiple environments for a single app next thing is how you are going to access your application so for that you need to provide the domain so let's say this domain has to be globally available within a region so currently my region is being selected like a us east one so let's say i'll just go ahead with something like a hello and if i just go for check availability you can have a look at this is not available so that means someone in the us east one region has already claim for this particular part of the domain so the complete domain will be uh, your custom string dot the region in which you want to create this environment and afterwards some constant string like a dot elastic stock dot com okay so i'm just going to provide let's say i'll just try with some test then also i guess not available so we'll just go ahead with let's say let's say some env1 yeah it is being available so i'll just go ahead with env1 actually okay next thing is platform type so here uh, what runtime you're going to use it so you want to deploy application for dotnet docker uh, go java node.js php python ruby tomcat so i'll just go ahead with the python for now and which version of python is currently being supported and which one you want to run for it so let's just continue with the 3.11 the most latest one platform version 4.1.4 that is recommended and that's only option going on okay next thing is application code now which application you want to deploy it so i just want to go ahead with a sample application otherwise you can uh, go ahead with existing 
version also but we don't have any existing version for this particular application so sample application is a good enough for us uh, because we don't have any code for now uh, in case you have a code available you can just simply upload this code from your local file also or you can put all your code at some location in a s3 bucket and from those s3 bucket you can reference those code for time being let's just continue with the sample application next thing is uh, what kind of infrastructure you want on which you want to run your application so you want a single instance where free tier is eligible you can have a single instance but using spot instance that means uh, almost 70 to 80 percent of discount you will get it but uh, it is also having a low priority because if in the same region some other clients wants that uh, particular resources Amazon AWS will take it back from you with some notice of 30 seconds around uh, we have a high ability machine we have a high ability which is also going to use spot and on demand both kind of instance and you can have some custom configuration which you can uh, configure it later for now let me just select single instance uh, where free tier is eligible and that's good enough for us let me just press next and next set of uh, configuration we are going to do so you need to create some kind of service role so do i have any roles currently available i don't have any roles currently available so i'm just going to create the new one where it's just going to pop up with this many permission see with a new role so all those permissions everything being defined here so it's just going to create a new role uh, which is having uh, already this aws manage policy being defined and where the trusted entity will be elastic bench talk dot amazon aws dot com okay so uh, in case you have some existing role which is already being defined with this permission you can always go ahead with this one but in our case uh, we need to create and use a new service role internally it's just going to create it next thing is uh, ec2 key pair now why ec2 came into picture because internally it's just going to use this ec2 instance for deploying your application so in case you want to communicate with this ec2 instance you can always use some key pair and for key pair let me just go to ec2 a region specific some key pair is already available because earlier we have created this key pair okay so one for the linux and one for the windows i just created for my earlier videos so what i am going to do let's say i'll just going to create for my key pair linux okay next thing is ec2 instance profile now this is not a mandatory uh, requirement as it says but uh, if you don't provide this ec2 instance profile uh, you will get error and you won't be able to create those environment so what it says that uh, here also you need some role where you can uh, create some ec2 instance profile where the trusted entity is ec2.amazonaws.com the only reason is that internally it's just going to use this ec2 and to the ec2 we have to provide some permission and that is being defined as a two or three some policies like aws elastic bench talk web tier so you can have a look at it is just going to have s3 access okay some x-ray related stuff some logs same way we have a aws elastic bench talk worker tier so for now you don't need to worry about this thing let's just quickly create uh, this role in my another tab so i'll just go to im and you will be able to see if i just try to refresh this thing i don't have any ec2 instance profile so to create this instance profile let me go to roles and i have some defined role here actually so i'll just going to create a new one and for which one i want to create it so that is for ec2 okay we press next and elastic bench talk okay so elastic bench talk uh, web tier and worker tier okay and there is uh, one more see this is so trusted entity is this one that means uh, we want to allow this permission on ec2 instance because internally is just going to use this ec2 instance and we have elastic bench talk multi container docker so where is the multi container docker 
Elastic, Beanstalk, uh, C multi container Docker. Okay, so I'm just going to allow for this three permission. Let me press next. And this is a uh, Beanstalk. Okay, stack uh, Beanstalk uh, EC2 profile. I'll just write it like. Okay, so allow EC2 instance to call AWS service on your behalf. And this is the trusted policy. See, ec 2amazonawscom Let me create the role. Now, this is the global by nature. And you can have a look at Binstock EC2 profile being created. So if I just try to, uh, okay, list down, I have to refresh it. And you can see Binstock EC2 profile being created. Next. Uh, you have to set up for networking database and tag in the next one. So are you going to use uh, existing VPC or you can always create a custom VPC there. We are not going to detail about it. Instance setting. So under this particular region, US East 1, there's total six data center. That means six availability zones are available on which are the availability zone you want to deploy your application. You want to make your application running so let's say we can select all of them we can select few out of them so i'll just select randomly any of the two okay database so uh, with this application you want to connect with some database so for that also you can select some availability zone where you want to do it for our application we don't need to bother about anything for now so no database related settings you need to worry for now tax so we are not interested in tax or you can always attach some tags. Okay. Okay. Next thing is uh, configuring instance traffic and scaling. So what kind of uh, boot device you are going to use it. So magnetic SSD, SSD general purpose three. So I'll just go ahead with a container default for now. And these are the, some of the default storage is just going to use it. Amazon CloudWatch monitoring. So after every five minutes or one minute, just going to watch for what is happening with your uh, instance okay so instance metadata service currently it's being deactivated we don't need to worry about those things let me just go ahead with some default ec2 security group for now auto scaling group so you want single instance or you want something like a load balancer so in that particular case you can configure minimum instance and maximum instance so let's say I'll just make it like a 10 to let's say some 120. That means uh, minimum 10 instances is continuously running. And in case of uh, traffic just immediately pops up surge in that particular case, it can go to even maximum 120 instance. For our application, we'll just go ahead with a single instance. Okay, fleet comparison uh, composition. So spot instance are lodged at the lowest price. So you want to go ahead with the lowest price. You can always select spot instance. Otherwise, let's just continue with the on-demand instance. Okay, I guess T2 small, that is our free tier part, I guess, and that is being already selected or T2 micro actually, it's a free tier, but that's fine. We'll just go ahead with uh, instance type T2 small. And let me just go for next. And I guess all our configuration is about to finish. Uh, okay, in the next one, uh, health reporting, so we can continue with the basic health reporting or some enhanced one. Let's just continue with that and how you are going to manage your platform updates. So at what interval you want uh, uh, some patch to be happen. Okay. So minor and patch or a patch only. Okay. Okay. So I guess these are the all option for now. We can just leave it as it is and uh, we'll just continue for the next one. Okay, last one environment property. So here you can add some environment property and those things you can use in your Python code also. So there is a Python path related one default environments uh, variable already being defined. This is at this particular location. Next. And I guess it's about to finish all the configuration for our environment. Okay, at the end you can just simply review all the configuration you have set up for creation of your environment and let's just submit it and let's start creating our first ever environment inside the Binstock application. Okay, so now 
uh, it's just launching your environment all those logs and events are happening you can always monitor from here and definitely it's just going to take three to four minutes around to launch the complete environment so i'm just going to pause my video and i'll get back to you once the environment will be ready with us to test all right so you can have a look at it looks like that health is okay that means our environment is ready to test it before that i want to show you about the events you can see now while launching this environment these are the events happen okay nowhere we got any kind of failures or anything successfully launched this environment my first step env1 uh, you can go for health check and everything here so we don't want to go into detail for now let's just quickly test our application and you can test this application from this particular location or i would say url env1 that is your environment uh, subdomain name we have kept then your region and elasticbeanstock.com so let me surf for it and bang on some default uh, page for our python application which we have used sample application that is running fine okay you can navigate to uh, different tutorials or anything here it doesn't have anything apart from some sample page okay some logs you can monitor from here nothing for now some monitoring stuff some parameters uh, you will be able to see here for ec2 instance okay now uh, i just want to show you that uh, while creation of this environment there are two things happen one is ec2 profile we have created but along with that there is a one more role automatically being created and that is aws benchstock service role okay so you will be able to see there are two policies being attached so that is being automatically created because uh, we have given instruction while creation of this environment that you create this role with all those necessary permission okay so this environment is a part of this application so under this application uh, you can have a look at we have we can create even one more new environment also see under the same application so this way uh, for let's say staging environment for testing environment for production environment you can definitely create for the same application a number of environment and with each environment you can definitely configure a hell lot of different setting so application doesn't contain anything apart from it just the simple container for all your environment okay so environments keep on running that means uh, if the environment is continuously running uh, you need to pay for it okay so can we have something like a stop environment or something like that okay if we don't have uh, what i'm going to do i'm just simply going to terminate this environment and whatever features are associated with this environment for other runtime and lot other things slowly slowly throughout this whole playlist uh, we are going to learn about it okay so that's all about this video in this environment i'm just simply going to select environment and let me simply terminate the environment and enter the name of environment so this is my environment name and let me terminate all right everyone so in this video we have successfully created our first ever binge stock application and within that the environment being created successfully even launched this environment and we able to test our sample python application within that Okay, so I hope you enjoy listening to this video and please do like and comment on my video. Please, please, please do subscribe my channel so that I can keep creating such a great content on Amazon Web Services. I'll get back to you in the next one.